But now Planey is a couple inches taller, but look at that last line of the last five opponents. Greer's last five, they have a win percentage of 81%. Planey is 43%. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the bantamweight division. Judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Patricia Morse-Jarman, and Dave Moretti. The man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Tony Weeks. Fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 119 and a half pounds, wearing gold trunks with black trim. He enters the ring with a record of 23 wins, one loss, 12 wins coming by way of knockout from General Santos City, Philippines, Magic Mike Plania. <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions. He weighed in at 120 pounds. He is wearing black trunks. He enters the ring with a record of 22 wins, one loss, one draw. 12 wins by way of knockout. He is the WBO number one ranked bantamweight contender from Chicago, Illinois, Joshua, don't blink, Greer Jr. Okay, gentlemen, you both receive your instructions in the dressing room. Right here is good, right here is good. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Guys, I'm interested to see the output of Josh Greer Jr. tonight. And we have tracked him for a long time, broadcast many of his fights. His first six fights that CompuBox was tracking, he was throwing over 66 punches per round. But in his last three, his output has dropped to just over 45. So something we will monitor to see how much he gets to work, how busy he is. Utilizing the jab early on here to get things started. I'd like to see Josh Greer tonight do exactly what he's doing. Take his time, put the pillow away for now, get your jab going and get a good rhythm. And then if the shot opens up, it'll be there. But don't force the knockout. Don't get caught up in, in, in you know, the moniker of night night. That's what's kind of set him back. I think the last couple of fights is he's trying too hard. He needs to let the fight come to him like he's doing right now. That's it. Plania told us in the fighter meeting yesterday that he wants to be patient. That's not really his style either. He's a, a guy who likes to apply pressure. I'm seeing patience now, so I want to see how this, this newfound, you know, mindset from Plania works out for him against a guy like Josh Greer. Oh! He puts Greer down! Three, a left ten, hand floors five, Greer! Six, seven, eight. Well, Come what do we have here? Halfway through round one, and Plania has scored the knockdown. And now how Sam will Plania Josh had react? Sam explosive punching power. Since I said that, he has explosive punching power. That shot came out of nowhere. That was a lead left hook from Plania. And now he steps to Greer. I reset, I don't want to rush things, but look at this surge he has early on. What an incredible way for Plania to start off his night. A left hook scoring the knockdown in the middle of this first round. And now a right hand comes in from the Filipino fighter. He's very explosive and unpredictable, Plania. Trying to settle back in, and he does so with a right hand to the body. Plenty of just looks so much bigger, his upper body and his legs, than Joshua Greer tonight. He's got two and a half inches on Greer. Greer checked in at 5'4", 120 on the scale. Plenty came in at 119 and a half. Ten seconds. Of course, the time to rehydrate. Yes! I got it. I got the bucket. 
Big way to start the evening for the upset seeking. Set the wheel. What does he do? Greer was looking for a jab. Come. No, nope. it ready. was a lead left hook coming from Plainio. That's all you gotta do. Keep it. Sit down. Take all the time. Set him down. You know what? Greer was actually shooting the jab. Dropped his right hand Greer in the process. Don't be too anxious. Don't be too anxious. How challenging is it to stay the course with a game plan when something like that happens? in round one to tell yourself to still be it's disciplined very, to tell yourself to stay on Tess. course with what you planned it's very challenging test because the first thing that comes to heart is you want to go straight to the guy so but you got to use your head and be smart in there and you got to stick to the game plan that's it just discipline test that's what it's all about discipline and you see greer trying to do that right now yeah, Greer's responding the right way, at least as of right now. But yes, you got to deal with embarrassment. Your pride is hurt. You're angry. It's, 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 it's a bunch of emotions that's going through your mind and body. But Timothy is right. You got to stay disciplined or you'll find yourself right back down there again. That's it. The one thing I don't like from Greer right now, he got his chin up in the air. His eyes are wide open, but that chin is up in the air. He needs to tuck that chin down in his chest. So that's what were they them left hooks. Bernardo, what were they saying in the corner of Greer after that knockdown? George Hernandez says, look, he wasn't hurt. Fortunately, he recovered well, but he's got to stay alert. He's got to keep his hands up, and he's got to be patient. It's only the first round. He's got time to recover. I like the Greer from move, the movement from Greer, but he needs to get on his jab, and he needs to let his combinations go out at distance, and then think about defense after. That's it. Your head movement. Give him some things. That's it. Right hand to the body from Greer. Yeah, Tess, you got to keep a guy like Plainy, and you got to keep him busy. You can't allow him to think and take his time and try to line you up for a big shot. Let those hands go, Greer. Twos and threes. There's that there it is left again. Hook again from Plania. So that is where he has been finding success here. That's knocked down. In the first round when Greer Jr. dropped his right hand and was stunned, was floored. And Tess, he dropped that right hand again, and he got caught in the same spot. Let's see if he makes an adjustment. Ten seconds. Lania and Greer coming to the end of round two in Vegas. Ha! With you, our main event from Vegas here, Mike Plania, the Filipino fighter who's 23 and one, who scored the knockdown halfway through round one. Mark Kriegel <laughs> against Josh Greer. Josh Greer's had some slow starts in his career. Well, a word of encouragement yeah, yeah. For, for Greer fans. Yeah. Last year, we saw him get dropped in the third round against Giovanni Escanier. Came back to win by knockout in round eight. That was back in February of 2019. Four times in his career, he has been knocked down previous to this. Good, strong. See that little flick jab by Plania? Yes. You see that little flick jab? He's trying to bring that right hand forward. So, so Greer can get used to it. Then he's going to try to nail him with that left hook again. He's setting it up. I'm impressed with the patience of Plania right now. He told us this much, and I said this earlier, that he would be patient, and he's doing that. I haven't seen him this patient in any of his fights. He's trying to line Greer up, like you said, Tim, for that perfect shot. He just landed another good left hook right there. But also credit to Greer for recovering and getting back to the game plan. He's boxing rail right now, but Plania is still trying to land up a big, land a big shot. 
One thing that I noticed, Dre, when you attack Planier, he gets out of position. He's not set like he is when he's moving forward. But I don't think Greer has noticed that. I think right now Joshua Greer is just trying not to get dirty. And what I mean by that is he doesn't really want to get touched. He's already been down. He's trying to box this perfect fight. And you all hear me say this all the time, that when you're facing a puncher, there's a time and a place to slip inside, get some work off, get your respect, tie up and reset. Greer hasn't done that yet. He's boxing well, but he needs to get inside in spots to get the respect of Plania. You know, and, and yes, of, when he uh, does go inside, he will be in the lion's den, Joe. But we're going we're to go to the other side of the weight spectrum in having this conversation because it's, it's not dissimilar to a conversation we had with Tyson Fury when he reflected on the first strategy he tried to put forth against Deontay Wilder of saying it's tough to throw a no-hitter for 12 rounds. It's tough to try to be so perfect. Well, it's not just tough, but it's draining physically yes. and mentally. And I was always taught, and it's counterintuitive, but if you do it right, it can work. You don't always go away from power. Sometimes you have to come to the power and smother it, get your work on, and then get out. Yeah. And it can make it easier, a much easier night when you have that balance and that approach. Coming to the end of three, live from Vegas. Round four of our main event from the MGM Grand Conference Center. A reminder that Sports Center with SVP is coming up as he will have details on the NBA bubble from our boxing bubble to Scotty in the NBA bubble coming up. Phil Mickelson's turning 50 and the Madden cover is revealed. That is coming up on Sports Center with SVP once we get through with this critical main event in the Bantamweight division. All the title hopes for Josh Greer on the line. Number one contender in the WBO, top 10 in ESPN.com, and he was floored in the first round. In tough tonight against Mike Plania. I see what Greer's trying to do. He's trying to bring the tempo up a little bit and get his hands working. But he went down to the body with that right hand quite a bit. Plenty has a really good right uppercut. He has to be careful dipping down that low, trying to go down to the body. And what did we just see again? That lead left hook from Plenty. Greer can't Joe, do anything about it. Has, he needs has a mind that. of his own. It's almost like Plenty just whips it in there. He doesn't throw it hard, but it lands hard. And it's a real good way you just described it, Natural right? punch from Michael Plenty. It is. It is. It's wiry, and it has some speed to it. Right. He doesn't telegraph. He doesn't leap fighter. forward. He just stands in place and just whips it in there. At some point, I think Greer's going to have to slip inside and touch the body of Plania, get some uppercuts in there, rough him up, let him know that, hey, I'm physical too. I'm not going to stay here with you all night long, but when I choose to be here, I'm going to be the boss. He's got he's to take some, some calculated risk at some point in time. To get his respect, Dre. Absolutely. I agree with you. But what I'm seeing from Greer right now, he's moving towards that left hand. I will move away from that left hand. I will move the opposite way and use my jab. And don't allow him. I want him to reach for that left hook. That way. Yes, that way. Use that jab that way. Keep that right hand up. But instead, they're now circling to his right. And left took again from Planey, but that time Greer able to get out of the way. <laughs> of Mike Plania as it stands. There it is, right there. You see Plania get out of position and square it up. 
once Greer came in with a one-two combination, those are opportunities for Greer to make them pay. There you go. I told you that's it. It's amazing the audio we have with this yeah, fanless yeah. atmosphere because yeah. you can hear George Hernandez, a 66-year-old original trainer of Greer. Then he went away, went to California, that's came it. back to Chicago. But it, it's almost like you're listening into the conversation between trainer and fighter, and typically the roar of the crowd in the arena atmospheres we normally are televising fights, and you would never have this one. Encouragement coming from yeah, no, you're right, Joe. But, but but for fighters, this is what we're used to. You know, not in a in a a fight setting, a real fight setting on fight night. But but every day in the gym, this is what you hear. You hear two coaches yelling back and forth. You got to compartmentalize your coach, tune out the other coach, get your work in. Like this is what we've always known. Okay, here we go. Give him up. Time here. Let's go. I used to take it personal, Joe, when I used to hear other yeah, coaches yeah. say yeah. reckless things about me and say, oh, he's tired. <laughs> oh, he can't take a shot. That used to motivate yeah, me. <laughs> By the way, Timmy, the least <laughs> shocking thing I could hear in tonight's broadcast that Dre would take it that way. <laughs> yeah. Give me anything. Yeah. I'll take any motivation you give me. <laughs> <laughs> that surprised me at all. We're trying to dig that left hand to the body. And he was trying to meet him with a left of his own. There's another level to that offense test for Greer. He doesn't know it yet. You always got to be a step or two ahead of your opponent. You got to expect something coming back, and then you got to react to whatever he does. So you can start, and you can also finish. That's the next level. That's the elite level. Rear strong, one shot at a time. That's it. good. Okay, now what? Greer, now what? He just landed a combination. He just ran away. Now what? That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, bye, bye. End of five here, live from Vegas. <laughs> Halfway mark of our scheduled 10 round main event, a crucial fight for Joshua Greer if he wants to live up to everything he plans to be targeting here. But right now, Mike Plania feels like he could be in control of things, having scored the knockdown in round one. Coming out firing here with long-range right hands to the body against Greer in round six. Earlier tonight, guys, I said one of the things we're going to look at with CompuBox is the punch output. Early on when we started tracking Josh Greer and televising his fights, he was throwing over 66 punches per round. In the last three fights that have come with wins but some criticism, his output dropped to 45 punches per round he has been in the 30s tonight 35 31 37 last round 36 so he's even less than what we said we would be monitoring as the target line that he dipped to but part of the reason or all of the reason is michael plania greer cannot afford to make any mistakes so therefore he won't throw as many punches because Plenty is landing shots like that, and the shot we saw Greer get knocked down with in the first stop, round. Stop, stop. He doesn't want that to happen again, so he's very economical. He's trying to be very choosy with what he throws. Therefore, the percentage has come way down. That was a good right hand to the body from Plenty up moments ago. Bernardo, I assume that corner is bullish right now. What are they saying? Yeah, they, he actually told me, uh, Osmani Fernandez said, I'm happy. He said, I told him, you're the boss, but you've got to let your hand go. You're in control. You're dominating this fight. Greer's not punching, so take advantage. And he had just missed a vicious right hand or grazed. That shot grazed the chin of Greer just a few seconds ago. Greer has to be careful after he throws his combinations, especially to the body, and not raise straight up so Plenty can land that right hand. Yes. 
Somebody needs to teach Greer Newton's third law of motion. With every yes. action, there's an equal or opposite reaction. When he does something, Plania is going to do something. And then he needs to do something to Plania and expect something to come back. Just look at the body language of Plania. Feeling that he's the boss. Plania, just, he's in his... Yes, he is. He's in total control no, 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 right now. What will the answer be? How about Greer going down again? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Come to me. Okay. Here we go. Can you believe this? We just said it. You could see it in the bottom. Down and up. Down and Here we see Plania doing what he's been doing, just moving slightly, but then that left hook has a mind of its own. He didn't wind up. He didn't telegraph it. He just whipped it. Here we see right here. Boom. Right there, short shot. Landed right on the chin of Greer. And then the legs of Greer betrayed him, and down he went again. Don't drop your hands back that left up, hook son. is something vicious, and again, that thing has a mind of its own. Um, your description of that, Dre, is so accurate because it doesn't take the technique, the normal fundamentals of what we know a left hook to be, of that right angle, of that parallel to the ground. It almost goes beyond the normal arc and just whips right in like a viper strike. And two times now tonight, it has scored the knockdown for Mike Plania in the first round and in the sixth round. So when we look at Andre Ward's card, you will see the 10-8 rounds, and you will see the command and control of 58-54 Plania. And how about what we said a few times earlier tonight? Those in the know, things were bubbling up. The Vegas line was moving. The money was coming into today on the underdog, and Plania was getting support, and now he's in control here. Stop, 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 stop. Watch behind the head. And to your point, Dre, Plania, when he throws that left hook, it almost looked like he's stepping in with the jab. You saw the hand, the right hand of Greer move forward, expecting the jab, but the left hook came. And of course, calls the knockdown. Good two-piece right there from Plania, left hook and a right hand to follow. Driving down with that right hand. At this point in the fight, I think Greer been down twice. I believe he needs a knockout to win this fight or even pull off a draw. Yeah, the two 10-8 rounds are so difficult to overcome. There it is again. Left hook, hook again. It has been there all night long. Wow. Now look at that left hand to the body, doubling it up there. I'll tell you, there is something to like about Mike Plana, isn't there? The Filipino from the same hometown as Manny Pacquiao, who's been coming on strong. You know, you can look yeah, down at his line-by-line, line, so guys. Is so and there is Greer with a left hook upstairs. But you can look down at Plania's line-by-line line and see opponents that had losing records or they were making his pro, de making their pro debut and then steps into this spot and has been delivering all night long. He'll have three rounds to go. Try to take this to the finish line and come up with a big win. This is just... We will see if Mike Plania can bring it home here in this main event or if Josh Greer has the answer. And then it'll be Sports Center with SVP following top ranked boxing live from Vegas. A chance to check in with Mark Kriegel. You know, last time Josh Greer went down early, he had a plan. He went to the body, he broke his opponent down. I don't really sense any of that here. 
Lania looks bigger, longer, more relaxed. That hook is the, the essence of swag. This is where Fury needs to work right now. He has plenty of right where he needs him. He needs to dig down to the body, stay shut nice and tight in there. Greer on the inside now, there's an uppercut that tries to wrap around the right hand as Plania then lets his hands go. This fourth combination. Greer trying to turn over that left hand. Shoulder to shoulder they are now. Short right on the inside. What will be the answer for Greer, if any? Right back. There's the right uppercut from Joshua Greer. Trailing on the scorecards here Good sequence eight. right here from Josh Greer. Good adjustment from Josh Greer. It's not working on the outside, so let's take it inside and see if Plania can deal with what we got. And right now he's having the most success that I've seen him have throughout the course of the fight. No doubt about it. And applying this strategy at just the right time because he needs something special here. Trailing on the scorecards. Three rounds to go. Short right hand on the inside. And Plania, without that space, without that weaponry, doesn't quite look the same. I've always said Greer does his best work when he's moving forward and he's being the boss. That's when you see the 69 punches around. That's exactly what he's doing. He's stepping up right now because he knows he has to. I got you, I got you. Stop, stop. Come on, come on, come on. And the fighting spirit of Joshua Greer has not turned at all in this fight. Even with the two knockdowns, he is fighting down like he's supposed to. And, and he's, he's resisting plenty of like he's supposed to if he's going to try to get to that title shot eventually down the road. Could have easily packed it in and went into survival mode. And I haven't seen that from Joshua Greer tonight. Some loose tape around. See the tape loose right there. Yeah, the right glove of Mike Plania. But we got the final 10 seconds here of round eight. A far better round for Josh Greer. Landed a right hand there as well. Trying to mount him to this point. As you see, Plania has thrown 203, landing 72. Greer, 162 thrown, landing 60. But the two most impactful effective, significant, the left hooks from Mike Plania. Six minutes to decide it. Josh Greer trying to keep his status. Number one in the WBO, top 10 on ESPN.com. Mike Plania trying to put himself into that conversation as a bantamweight contender. You see Plania don't like that inside work from Greer, so he's looking to operate on the outside, trying to catch Greer on the way in with that left hook. Let's see if it works. Last round and this round of the first two rounds with the body language has shifted. Now Joshua Greer looks like the boss and Plania is on the retreat. And he looks like the boss when he steps to him and can get to the inside. So let's see if he can gain that critical real estate here. And there's that left hook, just a threatening left hook when Greer tries to cross that threshold of getting to the inside. And there he is, now he's got to work. Let him go. Greer now made that adjustment, now he's trying to go underneath that left hook of Plania. Great adjustment by him. Let him go. Well, he's attacking the power, like I said, Tim. And, and again, it's counterintuitive yep. on the surface, but if you really know, that's the right thing to do because you smother the power and a guy like Plana, he wants to whip that left hook and have a little bit of range. You've suddenly taken that away from him. Stop, stop, stop. Let him go. Yeah, that is the both left hooks that we saw tonight scoring the knockdowns can only happen at range with that space. We saw that in the first round. We saw that in the sixth round. Round number nine here. Here's the right good uppercut. Main event. That's the right uppercut. Not only does Greer have to watch the left hook, he has to watch the right up of Plania because he has a darn good one. 
Yeah, he's got to watch it, Tim, but he's got to go to work like he's doing right now. I'm not saying throw caution oh, yeah. to the wind, but he has to do exactly what he's doing right now to hope that he can get a shot through and maybe even the score on the scorecard. Or at least close the gap on the scorecard. Stop, stop, I got you. Good sneaky body Ooh, shot from Lanier effect. right there. Sure was. That right hand landing to the body of Greer. Greer got to drop some of those feints so he can clear some of those punches coming from Lanier. If he drop a feint, make him miss, and then make him pay. You see the urgency with Greer now. No, 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 let him up, let him up. Trying with the right hand. Desperate for something. He will have one round to scout. Can he pressure Mike Plania? Mike Plania with two knockdowns scored, banking two of those 10-8 rounds. He's been in control for much of the night up until Josh Greer making a decision to change strategies in recent rounds. And now here's the 10th and final round. And here comes the pressure from Greer. Trying to chase him down with a right hand. Just missing that time. One thing we know about Joshua Greer is he's always in tip-top shape. Mentally, he never gives up a quick. We saw that in his last fight, even though it was a controversial decision. He came on late, and he's coming on late in this fight as well. He needs a big round, just like his trainer said. He needs to get a knockdown on Plania. But I think he gets there by doing what you said a couple rounds ago, Tim, which is faint and then shoot. Because now Plania kind of, even though he's moving backwards, he's kind of adjusted to the rhythm and the speed of Greer and the way he's coming. But if he faints and switches it up, maybe he can get something through. Hands free, hands free. Stop, stop. I got you. Now Plania, we call that turning in your opponent. That's what Plania is doing. You move to one side, you hit him with the left. You move to the other side, you hit him with the right. And then Plania did the smart thing right here by tying up Greer and not allowing him to work. Think about how much goes into all of this, all the mountains to climb as a pro fighter. 25 fights into his career for Josh Greer, just to even arrive at a professional career after surviving street life of Chicago, having to make some tough decisions, moving out to California, moving back home, overcoming the one loss, putting together the win streak. Working your way into the top 10, Hansfrey, into Hansfrey, number Hansfrey. one status Hansfrey. in the WBO. And a couple of left hooks, and it can stop, all stop, go stop. away. Final half a minute. What does he have in him here? I got you. Mike Plania has impressed. He said he was primed. He said he was ready. His only loss against the guy who was a champion in Juan Carlos Payano. Seemingly getting better at 23 years old. Magic Mike feels like he had a magical night. Two knockdowns scored. Just unbelievable accuracy right there by Plania leading with the left hook that causes the knockdown. And here it is again. Beautiful, quick, snapping, whip, whipping left hook from Plania that sends Greer to the ground once again.
great performance. So Mike Planning, a magic Mike. Overcame abject poverty in General Santos City in the Philippines. Has himself what he feels will be announced as a signature win. Let's hear what Mark Chinook and the judges have to say about that. After 10 rounds here inside MGM Grand, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Dave Moretti has it 94-94. Tim Cheatham has it 96-92. Patricia Morse Jarman has it 97-91. For your winner, by majority decision, Magic Mike Plania! Not quite sure what Dave Moretti was watching with the widespread 97-91 and 96-92. Far more legitimate and accurate depiction of the fight that we just watched with two knockdowns scored by Mike Plania, but the right guy won it. It comes by majority 